Here's a quote from best-selling author Stephen L. Carter. I find it hard to think of myself as selling books. I don't even have a website. I want to sit and write, not sell. More information at his website, stephencarterbooks.com, or friend him on Facebook where he posts two to three times a day. Oops. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Books and Beer. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic tonight is ebook publishing with Kobo Writing Life. Our guest is Mark Lefebvre with Author Relations for Kobo. Mark, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you are drinking this fine evening. Well, uh, I am a writer, editor, and bookseller. I've been one for 20 years. Uh, I'm part of the Kobo Writing Life team at Kobo, and I get to hang out with authors all the time, and I'm delighted to hang out with you guys. And I'm drinking uh, Church Key uh, North Lumberland Ale, which is from Campbellford, Ontario. It's in an old. Uh, it's it's brewed uh, in an old uh, church, actually, and it's uh, it's quite a fine uh, quite a fine ale that I'm enjoying tonight. Hold that bad boy up to the camera. I want to check out the label a little bit more. All right, a little bit. Can you see that a little bit better? Yeah, oh, very nice. And so you can. Uh, I haven't been there yet, but uh, you can go on a tour of the uh, of the the tiny church, or it used to be a church uh, that it's in. Looks like a fun place to go. Yeah. Well, this fine evening I have uh, something I've never had before, even though I'm a big fan of all their other products, is a uh, Goose Island IPA. Good, good IPA. That yeah, is, I, I have, yeah. Kind of kind of figured it was. So, yeah, not quite a Bourbon County stout, but we can do. You see the color. It's big. It's bad. Big Bad Baptist from Epic Brewing Company. Oh, <laughs> A personal, a personal favorite right there. <laughs> However, that bad boy begs for a stogie like nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, I might do that too. All right, enough of beers, Jeff. Oh yes, questions. I got all distracted by all the uh, the yummy beer here. So that happens. All right. So we know Kobo. It's an online bookstore, but it's really off the radar for a lot of people in uh, the U.S. or non-Canadian authors that I talk to. Um, is that a misconception? Um, I think what happened, uh, Kobo uh, is just about four years old. Uh, it, it was born in, in Toronto in Canada. Uh, it was a spin-off of uh, Canada's leading uh, bookseller. Um, probably similar to the way that Nook was a spin-off of Barnes & Noble. Uh, with the exception that uh, Kobo did become its own uh, separate company and was actually sold to Rakuten, which is a, a major company uh, in Japan, uh, last year. And Kobo, uh, the strategy for Kobo is partnering with uh, booksellers, partnering with uh, prominent retailers in different regions. And one of the things uh, that we had done originally is we had partnered with um, Borders. Well, didn't work out too well for Borders. <laughs> um, but we've got an even better partner uh, in the U.S. now uh, in the American Booksellers Association, which is basically thousands of independent bookstores across the U.S. And that partnership has been absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's still uh, quite young. We're still just in a matter of months since we've had that. But when Google turned their back on uh, on uh, independent booksellers, we said we, we would love that, that opportunity. We did miss the opportunity the first time because Google already had – Google had already uh, signed a deal with them, so we didn't have that chance back then. But now, uh, now that we have that, it's it's a fantastic relationship. So you can say we're back in the U.S. So I think a lot of people aren't aren't familiar with the the reality. I mean, when they think ebook and ebook devices, um, they think uh, all independent booksellers, you know, hate everybody that makes an ebook. And and really, what they mean is Amazon uh, when they really when they really say that. But I don't think we really know about the history of, of Google. Um, but I'm but I'm really more concerned talking with you today about how you guys work with the independent booksellers um, uh, around the country or maybe even around the world. But tell us a little bit about how the process works. So I think one of the one of the mistakes that the Google had made was they they gave uh, they gave retailers a, a chance to sell ebooks, but they basically gave them a way to drive all their customers to Google. And and the partnership that Kobo has with them is, we gave them a device that they could sell in their store. We gave them accessories they could sell in their store, so they could actually put products in 
the customer's hands. I've been a bookseller for 20 years. I know the power of putting a product right in the customer's hands. And, and you have that fantastic relationship with your customers at, a, at an independent bookstore. And so you give them that. But then on top of that, the customer who signs up, uh, all of uh, the, every time they buy uh, ebooks from Kobo, the bookstore gets credit for that sale. So the beautiful thing about that is um, the independent uh, the independent bookseller can can actually now start uh, recommending ebooks to their customers who want ebooks, and those customers can feel good knowing that they're not leaving the independent bookseller, but they're actually supporting the independent bookseller because they may be traveling and they don't want to read the 600 page book. They don't want to try and take that on the plane. They'd rather read an ebook, but they want to do it in such a way that still supports the local bookstore. So it gives the customer the opportunity to try out ebooks and do things with ebooks, but also know that buying them is also supporting that so that it, that independent bookseller can continue to be in that community, creating the cultural hub that it has always been. Okay, so and I, I know the answer to this, or I think I do. I'm always surprised when I preface myself with that, so I shouldn't do that. But um, in case people aren't familiar, uh, Kobo, the Kobo Reader. So if somebody goes to an independent bookstore with which you have an agreement, do they have to buy a Kobo Reader, or can they read yeah. books that they buy there on any device? Uh, yeah, so Kobo uses the EPUB standard, meaning you can buy an EPUB from Kobo, and uh, provided that the publisher hasn't uh, put strict DRM on it, you can move that EPUB to any device that you want. Kobo started off with the philosophy that you should be able to read uh, any book on any device at any time. We didn't even put out a reader at the beginning. We created free apps for all platforms like iOS, Android, BlackBerry. Uh, Mac, PC, and it wasn't until our customers demanded that they have a dedicated reader that we put out the first reader. We now have a family of devices. We have the Kobo Glow, probably one of the more popular ones right now, which is the e-ink device with the built-in light, so you know, reading reading at night. Um, the Kobo Touch, which was Wired uh, Magazine's uh, e-reader of the year for 2011. Uh, the, the, the Arc, which is an Android tablet, completely open Android tablet, and it is uh, certified uh, and uh, again, you can install apps from other readers on that tablet as well. It's that open. Um, so you, and you don't even need to own a device. If you want to, uh, they exist. And for particular customers, prefer and the, the Kobo Mini, I think, which is which is the cute one that actually fits in your uh, fits in your breast pocket or your purse or, or whatever, uh, and still holds a thousand books in its e-ink screen. So you have that flexibility uh, to not buy a device, or to buy a device, or to read it on another. Uh, on another platform. All right, well, let, let's switch to the other side of the coin then, authors. Um, you know, I'm a big supporter of local businesses and there's some great indie bookstores you know, here in Arizona that I'm a big fan of, so great, I'm an author, I wanna, I wanna use this. Um, what would I expect from a partnership or as an author putting my book out on Kobo? Is it just another marketplace or what exactly do you provide? Okay, so Kobo actually sells in about 200 countries around the world. Uh, a lot of authors, for example, who were popular, you know, pot potentially in the U.S. Uh, Amazon, you have to recognize, does still have a significant market share in the U.S. But a lot of authors were coming to Kobo because they recognized that that would give them uh, that would give them opportunity to be exposed to customers. Um, around the world. It, um, the thing I think that we offer, uh, which is which is really interesting for authors, is that chance to connect with the local bookseller, that chance for uh, a local bookseller. So you guys are near uh, Changing Hands is a, is a prominent uh, bookstore in your area and the staff there. I mean, they're book people. They love books. They love that. You have a relationship with the, the booksellers there because they're in your community and you're probably going there and you know them. Um, even if you don't have a print book available in the store, it doesn't mean they can't talk about your book to customers or recommend it because they now have a way to branch beyond it. Uh, as a bookseller, having been a bookseller for a long time, one of the most frustrating things is when a local author came in with a book that maybe wasn't necessarily right for my store and I knew it wouldn't sell, you still felt bad taking it on consignment knowing that they'd come back in six months and nobody would buy it. That's because the, you know there's a, a, local, a local thing. Uh, but, um, and, and you only have so much space on the shelves. So giving uh, independent booksellers a chance to suddenly have access to millions of titles 
digitally means they can accept all of them because it doesn't take any space for them to talk about them. So they can say, you know, let's say, Jeff, for example, let's say you have 60 backlist titles and they have your most recent one in stock. They can then, you know, recommend, well, we have access to all of his books digitally. Um, and, and so right now, if you wanted to purchase it, you could. So that it gives you a little bit, a little bit of that exposure. Some of the best of both worlds. Do you have a way to connect authors with um, local bookstores that are using Kobo in your area? Like if I had a book published in Kobo, we're changing hands, getting learned, hey, this guy is in your area to, to tighten that local connection or no? Well, that's that's one of the things that uh, we've started to do since this since we discovered the the greatness of the relationship. And so the team that I have working with me, uh, I'm an author myself, and I self-publish, and I traditionally publish. So I understand authors, and and it, my my goal really is to help authors be successful. So one of the things that we're looking at is trying to develop a program to make it easy to to bridge those relationships between uh, authors and booksellers. Um, in, in, in instances where we've been able to do that, and, and we haven't done it at any grand scale yet, we've sort of done it one by one, relationship by relationship, but we're looking at how, how we can use these uh, introductory um, methods where we've connected people, what worked, how did it work, was it good for the author, was it good for the bookseller, was it good for Kobo, and when it's good for all three, what, do we, what can we do um, systematically to make, this, uh, to make this an easier process so that everyone can win uh, a lot sooner. I think that'll really help out a lot with what you know, most of the independent booksellers that I talk to aren't aren't big fans of what's happening to e. What happens, you know, in the book world because everything's going to ebook world. You know, what up my inventory, whatever. I think this could be a really good thing to help that. But you know, there's there's one thing that might plague the problem of this, uh, and that has to do with exclusivity. Um, yeah. The big player in the marketplace, you know, the elephant in the room, Amazon, they've got a deal when you publish with them uh, electronically through their Kindle Select, uh, they, well, through their uh, the KDP platform. They would really like for you to become a Kindle Select, which makes you have, ex they have exclusivity for 90 days on your book. And when I say they want you to do that, oh boy, do they want you to do that. It's like every <laughs> six, every every time you click, there's a six second ad that plays. Yeah. Please put your book in Select. All right, maybe it's not that bad. Um, no, no, no. It feels like that. It's the candy yes. display at the the cash desk, right? And it just keeps it, but it's levitated to your eye level all the time. Right now, obviously there are there are some short term wins for that, but I'm curious what what's your perspective? Maybe not talking. I mean, obviously you've got a, a position as as the guy behind you know the Kobo and, and at least author relations. But as an author uh, and somebody independently, what do you think? Short term games worth it, or are the long term games always outweigh? Uh, I'm a long-term game kind of guy. I've been a writer since the time you sat on a typewriter and I banged out a novel on an Underwood typewriter and you had to actually mail things to um, publishers and wait six months for the privilege of your rejection. So uh, I understand patience, which in this digital age is a little bit harder to keep that patience. You know, I, I put my book up and a week later it hasn't sold. Oh, that's, that's I'm, I'm done. I, I quit. Um, it's a long-term game. It's a business. So I think exclusivity... I mean, so you're signing up for 90 days for a chance that if someone borrows it, you can get some money. Oh, and you can make your book free for five days if you want. And, and the free thing and the 99 cent thing kind of worked a couple of years ago. It's starting to die off. So, I mean, we, we thought when we built Kobo Writing Life, we said, you want to make your book free? It's your book. You're in charge. You own the copyright. Make it free. It's, it's your book. Go for it. If that's your business model, we don't think you're going to be in business for long if you just give away stuff. But if you have a strategy like you're giving away the first book in a series mm -hmm. and you expect people to come back and buy the rest of them, then that's a strategy. That's a business. We respect that. We want to give you the ability to, to be flexible. I publish my own work on Amazon and, and make it available through Smashwords because uh, I can't get to BNN from the, from Canada without oh, right. the, the, the bank account and the address and things like that. Um, so I use Smashwords to get my stuff to Apple and Sony and BNN and Diesel and all these other places. Um, my perspective as an author is that I wouldn't want to, you know, for my book, I wouldn't want to send all my customers in the entire world to only go to one store to buy it when my customers may not be walking by that store or live in the neighborhood of that store. So if I'm trying to force everyone to buy stuff on a, on a Kindle, for example, and those customers only ever read iBooks or they only ever read on a Kobo or they only ever read, you know, through whatever, um, there may be, maybe my biggest fan is a reader who will never read on that platform. So I, I really try to encourage authors to keep as many options open as possible, but I do encourage them to experiment and see what works for them. Some people, for some people it works, for some people they, they like having customers on all platforms, um, which which is really exciting. And I, and I think the industry is better 
the more players that there are out there to give customers that ultimate choice. Uh, we, we definitely agree with that sentiment whole, wholeheartedly. Um, so, yes, spot on. Everywhere is better than one place, even when that one place sells a whole lot of books. Don't exclude that one place, but don't get rid of the other ones um, anyhow. So, well, Mark, thanks for being on the program with us today. Thank you very much. It was great to be with you guys. Hey, great big news out there, kids. We are changing. The Books and Beer Hangout is no longer going to be on Thursday nights. Why? Well, because there are really cool beer events that happen in Phoenix on Thursday nights, and I would like to go to some of them. So would Jeff from what I hear, too. So we are moving, not this next week. There is no show at all next week, but we are moving to Monday nights. Our very first show will be on the 25th of March, still at 6 o'clock if you're on the Pacific side of things and 8 o'clock if you're on the Atlantic side of things that evening, Monday nights from now on, well, now in two weeks on. Anyhow, so show notes, by the way, you can get show notes, Mark's information, information about Kobo, all of that at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information, education, classes, and all sorts of stuff, including the book that I just wrote and pretty soon the one that Jeff's writing, you can find that at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for enjoying the show.